Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 29th of October of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. First we are going to start with Crimea. The sources are saying that during the previous night the Ukrainians made another attempt to attack this area with significant number of drones. The Russian sources are saying that they managed to shut down, destroy, to suppress with electronic warfare up to 36 drones. We understand that the main purpose of the Ukrainians was was to test and to stress Russian air defense to find the points. Obviously, upcoming night, and we are going to receive more updates and more attempts from the Ukrainian side to attack this territory, maybe with storm shadow missiles and attacks missiles. So, not the previous night was important when the Russians shot down 36 drones. The most important is upcoming night when the Ukrainians will try to destroy strategical object on this area. Uh, also, very interesting updates are coming from Kherson direction. Today, the Russian sources reported that uh, they not just reported, they confirmed. They confirmed that uh, they were forced, Russian military authority were forced to uh, dismiss the current general in this area. And uh, Alek Makarevich, he was responsible for Kherson direction for the Dnipro group. He's like a tactical group Dnipro. He was in charge and he was replaced by the general Mikhail Tiplinsky. Of course, the real reasons why the Russians took a decision to change the general are not pro wasn't provided, but we understand that the main reason of this change, uh, reasons of that change, were that that general, ex-general, missed the Ukrainian landing operation and allowed the Ukrainians to establish footholds in the vicinity of Pitstepne, Kazachi, Lahiri, and Krynki. And the Ukrainians created uh, the, these uh, footholds a very long time ago, but yet the Russians haven't managed to force the Ukrainians to step back. The situation is not critical, but the reputation is very uh, was like damaged. The Russian military reputation was damaged. When talking about the situation on the ground today, the Ukrainians published a very interesting video from the city, from the village, from the area of Vinogradova. On this video, we see how the Ukrainians uh, attacked, made a lot of attacks against the Russian armored vehicles, uh, supply machines about uh, against hidden position on this part of the area using FPV drones and as a result of those strikes as you can see the Ukrainians managed to destroy a few uh, to, to, to deal some damage and the question is what is the purpose of these all those attacks and we understand and we know that so we haven't received anything from this direction for a very long period of time so maybe this is a possible uh, like actions from the Ukrainian side to prepare the territory for another landing operation in this area very likely that the Russian the Ukrainian are going to do this because we had discussed this um, like Kinburn speed for a very many times and this is maybe the preparation before upcoming landing operation exactly in this area anyway we're going to we're gonna see this very soon when talking about uh, other uh, front lines uh, other areas in this on the along the Dnipro River the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces uh, along the Dnipro uh, this is the attack in the city by the name of Nova Berislav using the FAP 500 as you can see as a result of strike another ukrainian mo depot or position was destroyed the russians were bombing heavily adrada kamyanka also with fab 500 a significant number of explosions and we discussed that the main purpose of those attacks uh, were to destroy and not to allow the ukrainians to concentrate their forces everything that located in front of Novo um Novo Nova Kachovka, the cities like Kazatska, Berislav are reducing till ruins by the Russian aviation forces. When talking about the Ukrainians' footholds on the Russian bank of the river, as we told, as we discussed, the Russians still haven't managed to force the Ukrainians to step back, but the Ukrainians from their side continue bombing and attacking the Russian forces. On this video, we see how the Ukrainians support their like uh, foothold, their forces in the city, in the village by the name of Krynki. The Ukrainians are attacking the Russian artillery positions, uh, Russian infantry positions with all types of weapon they have trying to suppress the Russians and not so allow them to concentrate their forces for a further counter-offensive operation and clearing operation of Krynki. When talking about Pistepna, Pishanovka and uh, let's say Prydniprovska foothold, uh, the Russians published the video of FPV drone strikes against the Ukrainian forces that uh, tried to hide below the bridge. All of them were destroyed as a result of FPV drone strikes. And also the Russians published a significant number of fast boats that were damaged and destroyed also by the Russian fire. Maybe with FPV drones or maybe with another type of weapon. So we can calculate um, few, maybe a dozen of Ukrainian uh, boats that, were, uh, that sank in this area as a result of Russian fire. 
which confirms also confirms that Ukrainians use a lot of different types, a lot of ways, a lot of roads, how to support and supply their forces. They're using also the area below the railway, also they're using the rivers, they're losing boats. So uh, I'm not saying that Ukrainians have a very stable and very powerful foothold, but we can uh, agree that Ukrainians uh, feel themselves pretty, not safe, but not comfortable, but um, maybe stable in this area. Uh, of course, they're having losses, but uh, they're feeling the same pretty stable. Uh, when talking about another important update is that, if you remember yesterday, we discussed that the Russians reported they destroyed Hammer system, and today we got probably the geolocated video of that strike, and the author of this video claims that uh, on this screen we can see the destroyed uh, Ukraine Heimers. Of course, uh, very difficult to uh, like to recognize Heimers, but uh, this is the author this uh, that provides us this information. When talking about the global scope of your son direction, the Ukraine's lost 55 soldiers, two armored vehicles, and two artillery systems, and no changes on the ground. Uh, now we're moving to uh, Zaporozhye direction to the battle for Abotsna. The Ukrainians continue losing their armored vehicles. Another day and another loss, significant losses among the armored vehicles. And according to information we have just for the previous five days, the Ukrainians lost up to around 50 around 50 units around 50 pieces of armored vehicles so of different types bradley leopards old soviet machines and so on so there are very heavy clashes in this direction the ukrainians um, made during the previous 24 hours more attempts to force the russians to step back and as i understand uh they lost for 50 uh, up to 50 uh, pieces of armored vehicles, but the Ukrainians managed to establish control over the tree line that goes on the west of Robotina. Uh, it's very difficult to understand whether the, all those losses um, cost this like foothold. I'm not sure, but I think that Ukrainians uh, have better understanding the situation than me. So the Ukrainians, as a result of those clashes and the battle that took place in Robotina uh, for the previous week, managed to establish control over this uh, tree line, but they had significant losses, a lot of leopards, a lot of tanks, and so on. When talking about Verbova direction, the Ukrainians continue concentration of their forces, but uh, they're having significant losses. It's not like, it, currently, this is not like uh, fortifications, uh, this is not like Ukrainian like defense belt. Mainly, it looks like a uh, Ukrainian cemetery or a graveyard of a, a lot of Ukrainian soldiers. The Russians published another video how they were bombing and attacking the Ukrainians with FPV drones. We will not stop on this video because there were a lot of losses from the Ukrainian side. And the Russians also continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian infantry who goes in direction of Virbovo to replace their forces on the edge. And the Russians start destroying Ukrainian forces on move. Uh, while moving in this direction and they continue destroying Ukrainian forces with FPV drones during the night. As a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost 40 soldiers and 10 armored vehicles. But the very interesting update about the armored vehicles, the Russians are saying that Ukrainians lost just light, mainly the Ukrainians were losing light vehicles. So during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians made a lot of attempt to evacuate wounded soldiers. There was very heavy clashes in Robotina, a lot of bombardments in Verbova. Then the Ukrainians concentrated a lot of light vehicles for evacuation purposes and most of them were destroyed during that process. Uh, when talking about Kopany, the Nistirianka Kopany area, the clashes in this area continues. The Russians managed to discover another Ukrainian position and as a result of FPV drone strike, uh, the Russians managed to destroy Ukrainian camera somewhere along the true line. As you can see, we stopped receiving any updates about the Battle of Kopany. For example, during the previous few days, we haven't received nothing. If we increase the number of updates since the beginning of October, we're going to see that uh, the Russian concentration, we see that the Russians was, were very concentrated in this area, and now we understand, after months, what was the reason why the Ukrainians were completely defeated in another attempt to attack Kopany. And the main reason of that is this line. As you can see, the Ukrainians, since the beginning of that operation, were using just one supply road, this one and uh, the main purpose of Ukraine attack was to establish control over these three line and maybe to get further but they couldn't do this and the main reason of that is the supply road was under complete Russian control of FPV drones significant number of vehicles significant number of forces were destroyed just while moving to the south so the Ukrainians couldn't like develop a normal electronic warfare like environment in this area and they paid for this for that's a very big price 
so the battle for Kopuny uh, was uh, like uh, failed by the Ukrainian side. When talking about Vremivka tactical bridge had, we stopped receiving any updates from this territory at all, neither from the Russians nor from the Ukrainian side. Currently, nobody uh, have any interest in this area. Now, everybody understand that there are no chances either for the Ukrainians to develop their offensive operation further in Staroblinovka, Kirmenchik. Neither the Russians have chances to return all the cities and uh, back because there is no need. All these villages were reduced to ruins with a uh, 500 strikes and like toss flamethrower strikes so there is there is no need to counterattack. the situation was stabilized and as i understand we're going to see this picture till the beginning of the next uh, summer or the next year a lot of updates so we start receiving one more, more time from the area Krasnogorovka, Novomikhailovka. After a few days of operational pause, the Russians launched another wave of counter-offensives. And finally, we start receiving more updates from the north and Novomikhailovka direction, but the updates are not so positive. The thing is that the Russians still continue demining and clearing this area. The Ukrainians have established so many uh, mines in this area, so the Russians, we know that from the south, the Russians have already uh, almost ends at Novomikhailovka from the south. We remember the video when the Russians were demining this area and the Russian tank was right running in like uh, 500 meters from the Ukrainian positions. But when talking about northern direction, the Russians still uh, spend a lot of time to demine and clear the territory in the vicinity of Zvirinets. And as you can see, uh, they, are, they are losing time and I'm not sure that the Russians are able to get uh, the line I'm going to show you right now. This one, this is the main purpose of the Russians to, as a result of operations in this square, to capture this territory and to get this red line. I'm not sure that the Russians are able to do this right now, at least right now, during the next months. It's that it's too difficult. It's too difficult and the main difficulties is about uh, the um, mines. But if we increase the number of updates, we see that the Russians was pretty like effective, pretty successful and pretty active in this area. They were storming like uh, Zverin's fortifications for many times, but still the minefields is the biggest problem of this conflict, of this special military operation. Uh, also, when talking about Novomikhailovka itself, the Russians redeployed their like helicopter forces in this area and today we got more geolocations of the usage of product uh, 503 the Lumur missile that the Russians were using to destroy the Ukrainian uh, forces and positions inside the village also we got a lot of updates from Krasnogorovka as you can see I have updated the map in comparison with the previous video uh, the Russians have reminded you that today uh, those days these days launch a very powerful offensive operation with a small uh, storming squad, one tank under the cover of the one, two personal carriers under the cover of one tank and artillery support, managed to penetrate the Ukrainian defense belt on the south of Krasnogorovka on the west of the coal mines, Trudovskaya, and as a result of attack, the Russians managed to capture more tree lines and to develop their foothold in this area. So, uh, furthermore, as you can see on this video, the Russians, uh, the, the operation was very interesting and the, the operation was very successful from many perspectives. The Ukrainian, the Russian Russians managed to suppress the Ukrainian fire positions. The Russians managed to destroy the Ukrainian defense belt. And the most important, if it's a look at the screen, you're going to see the uh, Krasnogorovka on the horizon. And as you can see, there are a lot of smokes and um, fire inside the city, which means that Ukrainians probably made like attempts to redeploy some reinforcements and reserve to stabilize the situation, but the Ukrainian forces were discovered and destroyed with artillery fire. Basically, as I understand, the road that the Ukrainians tried to use was under um, uh, real fire control. And when the Russian intelligence discovered the Ukrainian movements or the Ukrainian convoy, they destroyed everything that was heading to the south. And that allowed the Russians to get success in this operation. This night, obviously, the Russians are going to deep, dig, in, dig in deeper. Because obviously, uh, no matter the success, the Ukrainians will try to launch their own counter-offensive operation upcoming night. And if the Russians are able to hold their positions during the night, then they will be able to continue their offensive operation further. And as uh, as we discussed in the previous videos, the main purpose of the Russians is not to move further to the north. Currently, the Russians are um, are interested in developing their foothold uh, to the west, like along the these lakes and rivers. So. 
Uh, this is very um, important and very strategical area because uh, on the edge of this foothold we see a lot of lakes and rivers which creates uh, like a nat natural native barrier for the Russians. If they can capture this territory, uh, this is going to be like uh, endless foothold and the Ukrainians will not have even a chances to counterattack and to return this territory. This salient is very important from a strategical perspective because it is very easy to defend this area and to attack the Ukrainians and to suppress them with artilleries, with all types of weapons to make like sabotage attacks and many many other things. So this is the main focus. Currently the Russians managed to, let's uh, let's call it, uh, to establish the foothold from Northern Lake to Marienka and now the next thing they're going to do is to move further to the west and um, if we increase the number of updates since the beginning of october the Rus we we're gonna see that the russians have already started this movement but on the south in direction along marinka area so we see that a very um, big and um, very concentrated focus of the russians of, of artillery bombardments of uh, fpv drone strikes so we understand that on the southern flank of this salient the russians have already started movement now they will dig in deeper on the northern one and they will move uh, on the north to the west as well and this is going to be one of the most successful operations from the russian side by the way because it's there is no there is less difficultness in comparison with the other front lines uh we don't have nothing from we, we don't have anything from pyromaiska and Nivoyska. and about avdievka just one important update uh, uh just uh, for now just about like telegram posts that some sources are saying that the russians managed to develop their positions on the southern edge of avdievka and according to information we have as a result of fierce clashes the russians managed to establish control over this small like territory for now i'm not planning to change the map we need more updates more details but uh, maybe soon we're going to do this uh when talking about this territory donetsk and the south donetsk direction the ukraines lost on the south donetsk direction 130 soldiers and on donetsk 110 soldiers so on donetsk direction we see the minimal level of losses uh, of uh, the uh, ukrainian forces probably since the beginning of the special military operation very level low um, very low level of losses uh, now we are moving to artyomovsk bakhmut direction and we got a lot of very interesting geolocations and the most important are comings of course along the railways there are still very heavy clashes but when talking about the railways the sector of railways between andreevka and zelenopoly kurdumovka we got the video that was published by the russian sources on this video we can see how the russian fpv drone was heading in direction of ukraine positions and at this position the russian drone stopped bombing bombardments of ukraine forces with f with different types of grenades on fpv drone we will not watch the video till the end because of a lot of losses and casualties and deaths among the ukrainian soldiers but the main thing that i wanted to um, you need to note is that as i understand according to that video at least this sector of the railways either under ukrainian control or in the gray zone so before the next video this territory will be ch will change its color and we will move russian positions further to the east because they were ukrainians just on that video and the russians were bombing them with fpv drones which basically is the only evidence we need to correct the map at least in this direction uh, furthermore, the clashes continue along the railways in the vicinity of these lakes. Uh, the Russians continue bombardments of Ukrainians on, along the railways with FPV drones from their side, and the Ukrainians are doing the same thing, but uh, on the Russian side. So no changes, no clashes on the ground, just the FPV drone strikes exchange on in this area. When talking about northern direction, we haven't received anything from this area for the previous uh, 24 hours. Now we are moving to Bilagor of Katarsko salient today uh, we got very interesting video and most of the uh, channels most of the telegram and twitter channels published and spread shared this video saying that uh, the russians were saying that bilagorovka is uh, not bilagorovka but uh, avdeevka terikon is under our russian control but later we managed to geolocate this video and as you can see this video with terikon was made not in the vicinity of avdeevka but in the vicinity of bilagorovka so if you saw this video and you saw thoughts that this video was made in Avdeevka, so that was a fake speculation. Uh, this video was made in Bilagorovka, where also we can see some clashes and bombardments without any changes on the ground. Very interesting updates are coming from Tarskoe salient, to be more precise, for the from this forest. The Russians, uh, if you remember, we discussed this area yesterday. 
Uh, the Russians continue like um, clearing this territory, suppressing this territory with all types of weapons they have. Uh, and on this video, we can see how the Russians using anti-tank missile attack the, Rus the Ukrainian trenches. This is an explosion. And uh, so uh, if we increase the number of updates since the beginning of October, we're going to see a uh, real Russian focus in this area. So as you can see, the Russians are pretty focused in this square. Uh, currently, they're trying to clear and to prepare the foothold in the area for upcoming Russian offensive operation. So the main target of the Russians for the next few weeks is going to take um, is to take control over these fortifications, tree lines and this forest. So we'll see what the Russians are able to do this, but the focus tell us that they are planning to. The Ukrainians from their side, as you can see during October, were bombing and attacking Dibrovo, Tarsko is selling heavily as well. So I can't even tell that the Russians are, are like feeling themselves very comfortable. No, they are not very comfortable position because the Ukrainians have a lot of force in this area and they control Serebrianka forest and uh, the uh, way to this area. So and it's they can make a lot of problems for the Russians. When talking about Liman direction, the Ukrainians lost 70 soldiers. On Kupin's front line, we got very interesting updates from Raigorodka. If you remember, uh, during the summer, the Russians made an attempt to attack uh, the Ukrainians to cross Zhiribets River and to attack the Ukrainians in Novoyegorovka, Nadia. There were very heavy clashes, battles and so on. But uh, starting maybe a previous week, we stopped receiving any updates from this territory. And the main reason of that is that probably the Russians were defeated and they failed their operation in this area. Today, for example, the Ukrainian sources published a video from Raigorodka. And they published the video with significant number of destroyed armored vehicles from the Russian side. And uh, um, now we can make some conclusions about that operation, about that offensive operation. Yes, uh, no matter that uh, currently there is no, the Russians are not active in this direction, doesn't mean that the Russians were forced to step back to leave this bank of Zheribets River. No, the, Ukraine, the Russians managed to dig in deeper. They managed to create trenches, they have a foothold, maybe they have solved the issues with supply support, but currently the Russians don't have forces and power to continue their offensive operation deep inside of Kupinsk area. They have the foothold, but they can't develop this foothold anymore. And the main reason of that, if we increase the number of updates, we're going to understand why the Russians fail this operation. As you can see, a significant number, a significant concentration of Ukraine FPV drones exactly on the main supply road that goes from Svatova to Raigorodka. The Russians were using the same road, the same area to support their offensive forces. This is the, was the, That was the Russian tactic. They were using this road and every single day more and more machines, vehicles were moving to the combat line and the Ukrainians basically established full FPV drone control over this area and they destroyed the now we see on this area the same situation as we just discussed in Kopony, where the Russians established full fire control, FPV drone control over the main road in Kopony, and basically that situation led to significant loss from the Ukrainian side. They basically, the Ukrainians were defeated because they were completely cu um, cut off from any support. And now we see the same situation. The Ukrainians uh, didn't win the Russians on the ground like they repelled the Ukrainian attacks. No. The Ukrainians basically established full FPV drone control over the supply road and the Russians uh, basically couldn't continue offensive because of like absence of support, of supply and so on. So that was the situation in the vicinity of Raigorodka, in the vicinity of Nadia and Sergeyevka. Uh, about the uh, common situation on Kupensk, the Ukrainians lost 165 soldiers and two armored vehicles. The most important detail we got from the north of Sinkovka from this interception of roads. If we increase the number of updates since the beginning of September, so uh, at the uh, let's, at the top level of Russian offensive operation in the, on this territory, the Ukrainians published a video how they were bombing and attacking the Russian positions and these interceptions of road. This is it. This is the video. So this road was under Russian control. But today uh, on the 29th, so that video was made on the 11th of September. So almost more than a month and a half ago, the Russians controlled this territory. But uh, today uh, the Russian sources published the video how they were bombing this territory with T-80 tank. And on this video, we see that currently this uh, uh, small um, stronghold was returned back by the Ukrainians. So we see that the Russians also stopped any real offensive operations between Liman Pierva and Sinkovka. Currently, there are like uh, local clashes on the ground. The front line completely stabilized. 
maybe the, the Russians will, will make more attempts to attack on land Arlyanka, uh, Yahidna, Stepovo Novoselka, Ivanka, Kislovka, Katlarovka. But for example, uh, we haven't received anything during the previous 24 hours. So I'm not even sure that the Russians are planning to do any attempts to attack in this direction as well. So currently the main Russian focus is, uh, it's currently the Russians are focused completely just on Avdeevka and South Donetsk direction, Novomikhailovka, Krasnogorovka, Krasnogorovka the second, Avdeevka. These, these are the only places where the Russians want to attack and they want to get some success. And they try to concentrate and to get as much as possible reserves exactly in this direction. And if they want to be successful there, they need to be 400% sure that they will not lose any uh, unexpected counterattack from the Ukrainians on any other front line. So that's why they stopped any offensives because they don't want to risk and they don't want to waste their armored vehicles for free and for nothing. And that's it for this video. Military summary channel reminds you can damn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye bye.